Good morning, guys. Welcome back to Barham Engines channel. So it's half past eight, Monday morning. And the first thing I do is make myself a nice cup of coffee. And if you're wondering why I'm such a pig and drinking out of such a dirty mug, this mug has actually been cleaned by Carlos. It's took all the seasoning out of it. What's on the agenda today? So first thing this morning, I'm going to do the pockets on the pistons for the Cosworth, the small turbo escort Cosworth. Then, as I said, on Friday, I'm gonna swap over the jigs and I'm gonna do that 15 mil cutout in between the two liners on the Norton barrels. And once I've done that, I'm gonna set the Norton barrels up and face the top of the liners and then set it up for reboring. So here we go again, guys. Putting the pockets in the Cosworth pistons, just doing the exhaust side first. So what I normally do is set the cutter up off our, off our donor piston here, our dummy piston. We do it so the piston is sitting flat on the bed and right up against this stud here. And then we know that it's in the same position as I set the dummy piston. Just nip it up. And bring the bed up. Start the cutter. And we go 5mm deep. On the zero, touch the zero, back off, wind it out, and we're doing them 35 mil apart. And just wind that to back to zero, and then we know we're good for the other one. Go. Wind it off. That's the first one done. So we've just done our first inlet cutout and I don't know whether I said to you before, but I use the same cutter to do the exhaust as the inlet. And the reason for that is to just sort of keep the, the weight the same either side of the piston. Um, so believe it or not, the inlets are very slightly in towards the center of the piston. So all we do is we move this cutter up and the spacing compared to the 35 mil of the exhaust is 40 mil on the inlets and that's perfect then and as I say that just keeps the weight distribution the same in my eyes so just going to do the rest of these and then give them to Carlos to put in the block so there we go all the pistons complete just going to take this one off the jig now and what I normally do is just Run a little deburr around the edge of these cutouts to get the burr off, and then um, and then we're good to go. Do remember to subscribe, guys, because I want one of those little trophies for 100,000 subscribers. So, top job. So what I've done is I've got this tool roughly in the centre of that liner, and then if I wind it over. there if I can get it in focus and just touch that just touch that line that on the edge of that liner there and then what I do is zero that 
then lower the bed. I turn this through 180 degrees, just so I'm using that same flute. Rapid the bed over, bring it up, and then we just go over and touch. Just touch on the liner again, like that. There we go. And you see that is 175.14, basically. So we just go half of that, and that'll take us into the center of those liners. So we've got it as deep as we can go. We've got our 15 mil cutter in now, so I'm just gonna start it up and feed the job through. I did have a few of you on the last video say, seeing as you're putting the liners in, why didn't you take this gasket off before you did it? And the reason is for that is this gasket here is an absolute bugger to get off. And the, the company that we do it for, they always, for some reason, they always blast their blocks and, and barrels, etc. after we've done the machining. And so they will cover up the internals of these balls and they will blast the whole lot and this will come off. I think they vapor blast them and they just specifically said, don't bother taking it off. Don't spend any more time you need to because we can end up spending half hour trying to get this off unless we machine it off. But that's not really what we want to do. So all we've done is we've just removed it off either side and that just gives a face for it to, to sit on the other side. So that's the reason we didn't take it off, guys. So Carlos has got the pistons and rods in. Just check the jut out and that's fine. It's got all the ancillaries on and painted, or most of them. And now just to put the sump on. Very nice. So we've got a Land Rover head here, guys. Uh, I'm putting um, hardened exhaust valve seats in. Um, this is for an unleaded, or what we call an unleaded conversion. So it's only the exhaust we've had to do. Uh, so the first steps, obviously we're using this Centronic CNC machine. Uh, so what we do, first steps is I measure this insert and then I do a rough cut at the correct depth at about one and a half mil below the diameter of the actual insert. And the reason for that is is we don't if we do try and do it all in one cut sometimes it can be sort of forced over and cut slightly oversized um, so we always give these a six thou interference with a bit of our special glue and um, and that should be that's absolutely adequate um, the reason we do six thou is any more than that and when you put the insert in it starts removing material on the outside of the head if you're not careful and any less than that is probably not quite enough so um yeah we usually use six thou so as you can see i've done one at the moment that is one and a half mil smaller than that diameter and um i'm just going to rough the rest of them out stop 
on the deck about probably about a millimetre shallower than the actual depth of the insert, just so the insert sticks out a bit. There we go. So I'm still chomping away at these liners here. They were about four mil round, so you can only do about 10 foul cuts on this. It's a little bit of a, what I call a Heath Robinson setup. There's nowhere really to clamp on these barrels. So I sort of have to put a bit of steel in between the fins and just clamp as best I can. So I can't go too wild with the, with the cut on it. But um, hopefully by the end of today, it should be nearly there on that. Well, thanks very much for watching guys. Smash the subscribe button and we'll see you in another one. Cheers. Yeah.